how about this? Drive your performance. This is a ProLine DL380 G4. Mega old server, like check out those heat sinks. And uh, today we're actually gonna be taking a look at it because uh, I've got some new hard drives for this thing because the current ones, well, not all of them are in caddies. And uh, when they're not in caddies, it means they rattle around a bit. They sit on top of each other, causing vibrations on the drive underneath. And uh, this thing generally hasn't been powered up in a long time. And uh, I've got some old ThinkPads I want to play around with. And uh, they will actually need floppy drives. And uh, this is my only server that has a floppy disk. None of my other computers, even old ones, have functioning floppy disks. So uh, hopefully that works still, because if it does, that'd be perfect. Um, and it actually looks like there is slot for a, a DVD drive maybe in here. Um, it looks to be, this is another SCSI one. And um, this stuff is all SCSI, none of that say to our SAS rubbish. Uh, um, there's our little RAID controller down there underneath the graphics card. Two big copper heat sinks, two more fans there. We've got ourselves a solid 12 gigabytes of DDR2, which is the max that this thing supports. I believe these are Pentium 3, maybe Pentium 4 era Xeons. We're gonna get this thing fired up, I think. I'm gonna have to drag a power cable around, plug a monitor in, and I don't think we can, we might get over a monitor on top of this, but it's, uh, these rails, they're quite old, and I bought them used off eBay, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's rust, so not entirely sure how much I trust them. Um, Two big beefy power supplies in there, I think they're only 500 watts. And yeah, they're, honestly, the most newest looking thing in these is the fans, which to say like this thing's really old, these are in very good condition. So I'm quite happy with that. There we go. I'm gonna get this thing plugged in and let's have some fun with it. I've just realized before I actually power this thing on, I want to remove that GPU because I think it had issues. If I remember right, I took a photo a long, long time ago where that GPU was making some lovely imagery. And I believe the onboard isn't very good on this either. So I think it's going to be down to potluck on whether this works or not. But just for anyone at home, whoever tries to remove these, um, number one, I need a screwdriver that I don't have. And number two, you actually have to pull this bit down but uh, HP with their brilliant racks, because this is a HP like rack. I hate pulling rails out a little bit too far. I always feel like they're gonna fall, but you actually need to move this all the way down. So there's enough space for these uh, releases so that you can lift it up. And um, hopefully now though, if I go and get the right screwdriver, we can get this out. And uh, oh, actually, you know what? I forgot, that thing has no PCIe bracket. Magic. I also bought the world's largest, most like, it's a huge network switch. I know there's bigger, like I've been in data centers and seen 8U Cisco ones that make people cry, but yeah, this is a big switch. It was very noisy and the fans were broken on it. Um, it turns out the fans weren't actually broken. I'll, I'll play the clip. But uh, yeah, a bit of WD-40 actually solved it. There was that much like gunk built up in it. I know ideally I need something other than WD-40, but it works and it's no longer a racket. So you know what, I'll take that as a win. And um, we've got the new hard disks here as well. These are uh, just your average HP 146 gigabytes, nothing special. Um, I might actually just realize you cannot see that at all there we go much better so 146 gigabytes 10k rpm so that'll be a lovely spin-up sound uh, and it's wow it's very old 2004 with a bit of luck though these should still work they did actually come in these hp caddies as well i say hp back then this was compact or hp compact as it became um ultra 320 scuzzy look at that this is before they had those spinny LEDs on the front as well. So you just had these little three icons. And uh, yeah, these should be fine. Um, I think it's this one that I'm concerned about because the postman dropped it through the letterbox. You hear that? I know it's a horrible idea for me to do that. 
but I think this one's gonna be bad and gonna have to go back to the cellar. But you know what, with a bit of luck, maybe it will have miraculously survived. Um, so I'm gonna get this switch powered on, which will make a racket and get that server plugged in. I keep saying I'm gonna plug it in and I never do. I need to work on that. I'm gonna be dead honest. I will not be surprised if this falls, but Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot Ethernet. Okay, that gave me a fright. I... The server's turned itself on. Let's see if onboard graphics actually work then. I, My power cables aren't really long enough. How do we change this to VGA? You're not gonna let me change? Okay. Uh... We have a red warning light there. VGA is definitely in. No display. Do we need to lock this in maybe? There we go, that's locked in. See, we're getting hard drive activity. Hmm, let's try rebooting it. This was back as well when the power buttons and the servers actually went in. And that was a big click. You can hear all the drives spinning down. Okay, we have two power supplies plugged into this thing now, so no more fault LED hopefully. All green. Still no signal, even with the GPU in. How oh, strange. Okay, so, attempt two. This monitor is VGA only, so there's pretty much no chance of it, you know, being able to switch to something else. Um, so it says no signal detected, so that's fine. I'm gonna fire on the server. Come on, please give an image. Nothing again. Huh. Let's pull out some of these RAM sticks because in theory, if we pull out all of the memory, we should get a postcode. Ah, uh, probably not a great idea for me to do that with power on, is it? Okay, so that should be power to the server off. It's gonna hold the power button for a few seconds. Let that fully, fully drain. And then let's go ahead and pull out all of our 12 gigabytes of memory. And you can actually see the little squeaky can down there. That little, little thing there. Um, and that guy should start beeping to tell us, hang on a minute, you've powered on your server with no memory. Put in the oh, prime me again. Now, I don't think it says there's an A6 there. Do, do, do. How do we configure memory on this guy? Okay, configuration, bank A, single. So in theory, this should now post with just two gigabytes of memory. Click our monitor on there. Green light. Red light. Ah, huh. there was orange LEDs on all of them then. So what we're gonna do, there's a dead bug in there as well. I wonder then if this thing has just been littered all over and is quite frankly, toast. That wouldn't be very good. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it needs one in this slot and one in that slot because we've got two processors because they aren't going to be able to share memory, I don't think. So that should fail. I, I don't understand this server at all. See, this time we've got three green LEDs. 
Our switch is still booting, so... Uh... Oh, hello! Aha! So DIM 3, where that little bug is, isn't detected. Oh! Look at this, 3.6 gigahertz, 800 megahertz memory. Invalid memory configuration. Memory bank and bank B does not exist. Dual BIOS, check that out. Integrated light sound management. I want to configure that. Um, okay, network. Uh, okay, so the switch is just booted, so I kind of expect this not to uh, do much. We've got a MAC address there, that's fine. Um, edit administrator, I'm going to quickly set a temporary password. F10 to save. 2009 on the firmware. And that serial number to me looks a little bit corrupt. Um, I guess what I'm going to do next, uh, let's see if we can configure this, F8 to run that. I want to view our logical disks, so we have a 67 gig, a 17 gig and a 33 gig. I have no idea what that means at all. What are these guys over here saying? They have no blinky lights at all. It reckons they're all okay though. Um, Right, that's fine. Let's see if it boots. Oh wow, look at that, 192 megabytes of cache. Yeah, I bet this thing, uh, it's super cap is probably dead. Oh, it's booting something. We got on here, Windows Vista. I think we've got Vista. Right now, still only the ILO is initialized. This thing's pretty speedy. Okay, those flashing lights on there have gone. We do have a warning LED there. And it appears that we're using this drive here. So maybe those are dead and I knew about it. Aha, uh -huh, Windows Server 2008 R2. Administrator, so it's not on a domain. That's bad, it should be on our domain. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's a little bit slower than I thought. So once this gets in, I'm going to shut it down again. And we're going to take a look and see if we can figure out what we need to do with the memory. And if you look right down there, you see that little black dot there? That's a bug. Um, and bugs shouldn't really be in the servers. Got it. Okay, I think we're bug free for now. If that bug was alive, it's wandered off. If it wasn't alive, well, it's gone now. it's going to initialize all 12 gigs of memory we've got one ethernet on again and no display again although saying that it did take a moment for it to come on last time so i'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt we'll give it a few seconds there we go monitor on hp pro lion lovely Ah, there we go. So now we can see we have all two gigabytes of memory there. All of the different DIMM slots it's got. We've got our drives initializing as well because they're getting power. And we've got a simple memory test going. Let's see if it does anything. 
and it's using two processors, I assume, or is it using processor number two? This is looking promising. 12. Look how fast it's going now. Now I'm curious to see if it has got an IP address now. So let's see if ILO has given it, it has, so we've got an IP address of 172 now. Um, DNS and, okay, uh, what do we call this? Let's say, so let's call it, DL380, it's not even, is it a DL? Yeah, it is a DL, okay. DL380 T4. But it actually said we have advanced there. Oh, F1 for advanced. Aha. Uh -huh. And we can see it's picked up our DNS servers there, all three. So DHCP server's doing its job. So we've got the primary domain controller, the secondary one, and the router. And then after that, if your OS supports four, it will uh, go ahead and give us a fourth one of Google's DNS. And um, we don't have a wind server on the network. I could maybe set one up on this thing. Maybe that'd be all right if I got some even older equipment. But at the moment, this looks fine. So I'm happy with that. So we are going to exit that utility because we don't need it. We know what IP address we're going to get. Uh, so port 1 is detected an imminent failure. So you are port 1 I believe. See the floppy disk initializing there. I'm going to let it boot all the way into Windows I think. Um, and let it properly log in. It's probably worth me doing that. And then we can have a look at maybe what's on it depending on what's on it <laughs> and just like that the yammer app died again so okay they're all deleted we're going to create a logical drive four and five are our new ones we're going to untick those guys uh, we're going to want a raid one i'm not sure why it says one plus zero um we just want one uh, maximum boot partition, that's fine. And enter to create. Interestingly, the red has gone away from that now. See if it comes back or not. Maybe now that the drive is actually getting a bit of activity, whatever bashing was done to it might have resolved itself. I can always buy another drive though. They're only like £14, so I'm not like, you know, crying over one of them being damaged um, so okay that's fine so now it's not going to boot because we just wiped our OS and um, let's actually get key into BIOS here and have a look so the MAC address for Nick 1 and 2 is disabled ah okay um, our product ID is smiley faces that's uh, probably not correct and um, we have no serial number either Let's have a look in our system. The OS selection is not required on this server, okay. Embedded serial port, that's fine. Virtual serial port. Uh, diskette, that's fine. Numlock power on state. I'm gonna change that to on, just so if we ever have post troubles in future, or if the onboard graphics really does go, at least we know. And um, PXE support is on, that's fine. Read and write, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Power regulator. Okay, well, we don't really need power savings. I'm not a, uh, not that sort of guy. These are actually gigabit adapters. That's pretty cool. Um, so we have our hard drive in here and then it goes to the gigabit adapters. Um, so right now it's just gonna go there. There's nowhere else for it to go. Date and time. It's an hour out, that's daylight saving times. That's fine. Server availability. 
Uh, there's no passwords it does not like. Emergency serial console, don't need any of that. Server info text, oh that's pretty cool. Administrator info text. Service, wow there's a lot of text you can put in there. Um, we actually have hyperthreading too, that's pretty mad. Oh, product ID, we can literally set it here. Should always match the product ID located on the chassis. Uh, how do we, what do we need to change it to then? I guess we just put in ProLiant DL380G4. Oh, we can't fit it in. There we go. So that should now fix that. So that's going to now show up as HP ProLine DL380. Probably worth turning that on. Cool. We don't need to change that. Seems to be happy at least. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the lid back on this thing. I'm going to leave it pushed out a little bit. I'm going to remove the VGA cable. And uh, I'm hoping this thing supports some sort of remote deployment. Uh, otherwise, this can be a little bit of a pain. So all I want to do really is mount a Windows Server, uh, maybe 2008, 2003, ISO sort of thing. What's system maintenance? Oh, I missed it. Yeah, it's just going to sit there and do that now. But for me, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm confident that it's, it's consistently booting now. Um, and I keep whacking this keyboard. I really shouldn't do that with this thing having hard drives in. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to to leave it and let it do its thing. Uh, we'll get an OS installed. I must have remote deployed this when I originally got it because there's no way I'd install Server 2008 over a floppy. That's asking for trouble. Um, so yeah, thank you for all watching. See you in the next one.